Yo, guys, what is up? It's Teach here, coming at you again with another video over on Pal World, and I'm going to show you a trick to prevent your creatures and your pals from getting all of these things on the upper right-hand side. When you log on, they're super depressed, they're fractured, they're broken, and they're starving. You can actually prevent all of this using a few simple tricks. I'm going to go ahead and show you the difference between my two bases that are working here because you can see that every single pal I, I have in this base is currently depressed and has major problems, right? So we can see that we've been, uh, they're all either starving in some way, shape or form, weakened or something along those lines. And there's actually a really easy fix that we can do in order to actually solve all of these problems. Now I'm going to show you real quick um, using my other base but you can see that they're both running about the same amount of time. And uh, notice how all of these are in good condition. And no, I haven't actually changed anything for these. Um, they are all just standard creatures. You can see that they are all doing just fine. You want to make sure every now and then that they have no major problems. But, you know, you can see that every single one of them doesn't matter. Their stats at this point in time is doing just fine. Now, the reason is pretty simple. One. The biggest thing that you can do in order to prevent your pals from being depressed and starving when you get back on is their pathing isn't very good. So you need to understand what that means, right? So people are building massive bases and they're all building just using their one base. And with that one singular base, they're actually causing major problems because the closer things are together, the more likely your pals are to actually just get stuck on something. And when they get stuck on something, they can't move, which means they can't go to the feed box to eat. Now, the feed box is one of the most important things in the entire game because the feed box will actually increase your creature's ability to heal, gain food, and kind of just increase their sand overall. Because when their sand drops to zero, they are quite literally going to have major problems. See how all of mine are at 100? You can do something very easy for that. So, anyways, let's back up for a second. Notice how everything in this base, I don't have too much in it. This is just a crafting base, or I mean, this is my like ore base if you want to think of it that way. Notice on how all of the beds aren't stacked together. They're all spread out. So when creatures try and go to bed at night, they're just going to walk to their individual bed that they want, and then they're going to pass out on it. My hot springs is a long distance away, so creatures can go to that at, at their own leisure and kind of do what they want. The feed box is far away from everything else as well, so creatures don't get like bogged down and creating these massive lines towards the feed box. And then also the one thing I want this base for is to actually smelt. So you can see that this smelter is a ways away from all other things as well. So basically the point that what my, my argument, what I'm trying to tell you right now is the further you can space things out, see there's only one box too, the better off your creatures are gonna be because they can kind of use their bad pathing and they can kind of adventure around and do what they need to do without running into each other and without getting stuck on certain items. Now that does make a massive difference by the way. So definitely take advantage of that. So that's just the first thing. The second thing is actually something based on what is in your feed box. So notice how in my feed box, there's a few different things. You can see that I have raw ingredients like eggs, milk, and other things, but that's not actually what you want to put in there. The things that you want to put inside of your feed box is actually crafted things. Now, if you go to your um, food section, there's three foods that you really want to focus on. You're going to notice that the bread is really easy to make because it only requires one wheat. So if you have a wheat farm going, you can get four sand and 27 nutrition per bread. So you can make thousands of bread really easy, but that's not the best one. What you want to aim for are jam filled buns and salads, because both of those in combination are really cheap, really easy to make, have a high amount of nutrition and sand for what you actually get costed by them. And your creatures, when they eat it, not only are they going to increase their nutrition, but they're also going to increase their sand over time. You can see that the sands are 100 percent. And as long as those sands stay high, they are not going to get any issues with their sicknesses, ulcers, depression, all that kind of stuff. They will get hungry over time, so they're going to automatically go over to your boxes. And because they're working, they're going to go grab those things. So definitely get level two food inside of your box. If you're struggling early and you need an increase in sand, throw some cotton candy in the first spot. And you can get that by actually having some. This is just a raw ingredient you can get from a farm because let's go ahead and show you the creature that you can use for this. You can see the woolly pop right there. This guy will actually walk around and drop it for you. Now, I do not want this thing in my actual base because you want to have it in a separate location. But what you can do if you really wanted to, you can place just about anything in this base instead. As long as they can pick things up, that's what we're looking for. And they're going to automatically transport things to this box. So 
those are the two first tips. Now, the third tip that you need to do in order to avoid your creatures having any issues with like the being hurt or not eating, right? Is each creature has special abilities. Now, what I mean when I say special abilities, if you look on the bottom with their passive skills, you can see that this one is cheery and hooligan. This one's a workaholic, aggressive, cold blooded and cheery. This one is a positive thinker and hard skin. And this one has nothing, nothing. And then hard skin, hard skin, all these sorts of things, right? So what you can do is you can click view details and see what that actually means. So you can see that when it's aggressive, it's got an increase in attack and defense, and then it's serious. So it's work speed is plus 20%. Hard skin. This basically means that it's defense is plus 10. There are some things, the negative ones, right? You can see there's a negative one here, work speed minus 10%. There are also things like um, glutton. That's one you want to avoid because you can see that uh, satiety drops 10% faster. So you want to try and put creatures out in your base that do not have those negatives on them because when they have the negatives, they're going to cause a lot of problems. Unlike the ones that have like workaholic where their sand drops 15% slower. Um, so these are the sorts of things that you want to look for those big boosts because those big boosts are huge and actually i know it doesn't seem like much but 15 percent is a lot of progress so you can actually place these things out in your base and actually gain a whole bunch of overall value from your from your pals so those are the three things that you want to do in order to prevent your pals from having any issues and they will just automatically farm and work without without you logging on and them being starving and then having any sort of injuries so Anyways, hopefully this helps you out, and uh, yeah, that's that's the big thing. If you don't mind, smash that like th button, leave a comment below for the algorithm, and then consider subbing to the channel. Now, my last thing, if you are playing on solo mode, this probably isn't even a problem for you because you log off and nothing happens. However, it's kind of hard to play on solo mode because things aren't actually happening in the background. You have to kind of work a lot harder in order to do things. If you're looking for your own server, you can look below. There's a link I have for G Portal, who is the company that I use, and you get 10% off using that link. And it'll be, make you, so you can, I think it's like $4 a month for four slots. And uh, yeah, it's much better overall for your quality of life to just be able to kind of get ha access to some really, really, really um, good servers and also have things happen when you're offline. So anyways, hopefully this video helps you out. And other than that, teach.